Yes, yes. I always tell people it's going to be fun. You join me, it's going to be fun. But somebody did ask a very important question. They asked the question about uh, whether we can become uh, narcissistic ourselves, uh, or in, in other words, uh, become abusive ourselves. Um, no doubt, especially if we are dealing with, or living with, or having to deal with someone who is a covert or, or overt in their narcissism. So thank you, Darcy, for coming back. Great tips in the first segment. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to pick your brain some more, but let's start off with that question we had from one of the viewers concerning okay. narcissism. Yes. The great news for the person who asked the question is that if you even ask if you're a narcissist, then you're probably <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Because they don't okay. They're not self-aware enough, but they never would believe that they're doing anything wrong. So why would they ever go to therapy and try to figure it out? No, you know, you're, you're fine. If you recognize it, you've studied it, you know what it means. You're not a narcissist. <laughs> so. Okay. So they can, they can comfortably check that, that box and go like, okay, I'm okay there. Yeah. Why? And it's the sad thing is so many people who have been exposed to narcissistic abuse say, say, oh my God, could I be a narcissist? The fact that you're worried about it means absolutely not. So it's a good rule of thumb. And then in terms of narcissists changing their stripes, narcissistic personality disorder is just unfortunately one of the more difficult things to even assess or treat because same thing, they don't believe that they have a problem. So they're not going to go and get therapy for it. They're not going to be measured. They might go to couples therapy if their partner demands it. But then they'll go and they will gaslight and manipulate the situation so that the therapist thinks that the spouse who wanted the therapy is the, is the one who is off. So it's such a tricky thing, but it's, it's got a really low success rate of, you know, people being treated by for narcissistic personality disorder and being su successful with it, unfortunately. You kind of just need to get out. You're, you're talking about uh, someone then that has an ingrained behavior Maybe yeah. from, uh, as you mentioned in the first segment, maybe from their nuclear family, as it were, the, it may be a part of a family history or a legacy in which this behavior, uh, if not turned into a full-blown illness of some sort, they're not looking to change, they're looking to survive. Absolutely. And they say that narcissists are often, their behavior is a result of childhood trauma. And of course, like, everyone has sympathy and empathy for that but that's kind of that is one of those types of responses that can come about from a traumatic experience you can become narcissistic and so um 
yeah, it's just, it's a really tough one to get rid of and it's so, so common. So I think the best that we can do is try to help people understand the signs, recognize them and get out when you can't, you know, just because it turns into this whole cycle of abuse that is almost impossible to get out of. Well, then now that leaves me to, uh, hold on one second here. Let me get everything situated here on my, my little baby, my baby TVs here, my little monitors. Um, I got a segue to something that you posted that, in my mind, is similar to what you just said. Yeah. It's similar to what you just said. The, the posting you have here is dated uh, February 21st uh, on your page. And what is your page again? What is your page again? <laughs> it's a lot. It's Roan, R-O-A-N-E dot mental dot health dot consulting. <laughs> and now you're going to probably type that in while I'm reading this. Yes, so sir. if you don't mind, so that everybody can get that. Uh, so um, here on your posting, February 21st, talking about narcissism, you mentioned about uh, no contact, gray rock, and just getting out. The <laughs> uh, survival uh, has to come in place. Um, your posting says, you're beautiful, now ditch the snake. <laughs> you're beautiful, now ditch the snake. I just got to ask, where did you, <laughs> okay, wait, no, no, let me, let me back up a little bit, I'm jumping ahead, because that's what guys do, sometimes we jump ahead, so let me just back up, now, in the comments, you, <laughs> you put, never date a snake, I think it's important that you even felt the need to put that out there, that you had to remind yeah. people, never <laughs> to date a snake. Yes. That's Don't. something. E that's something Eve should have kept that in mind. She was already oh. married to a good guy, so, yeah. so Adam was already good. So, so never date a snake. You're beautiful. Now ditch the snake. That's so a kind of beautiful picture you have there too, by the way, on your page. Thank you. What made you post that, my friend? Because I've always thought of narcissists as snakes, especially the ones I've dated. And unfortunately, there are several. Um, but just Oh, wait a minute. Well, let's stop the show. Let's just talk about that the rest of the way. Because we could turn this into a little, you know, Gossip Girl show if you want to. We can, we can do that. Uh, now, see, now you piqued my interest. Now I want to know about the guys. Okay, go ahead. And so you were saying uh, you accidentally came across some snakes in your lifetime. Oh. And so you felt the need to post this. Go ahead. I just feel like it's the perfect symbol for someone you, if someone that you date is being horrible to you, you know, they're okay. liars, they're slithery, they're repulsive. Slithery. I like that. <laughs> Don't, I like that. Be with them. It's not good. So recognize the red flag that is the snake and just, you know, step away from them. The other thing, and I've seen this on your show so many times, which I so appreciate. <laughs> I will sit and watch you talk to narcissistic abuse experts and they are beautiful. They are so smart. They are so engaging and you know, just these amazing women. And I'll be sitting next to my daughter who's doing homework and I'll be like, look at this woman. Can you believe that a narcissist got to her and duped her? Can you believe that? You know, and she'll be like, mom, that's you too. You know, <laughs> it's just like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how they do it. It's like, they all have some secret playbook that they all roll by and it's just, horrifying and so i just hate to see yeah. get stuck in that so so when it comes to if you look at the screen there are different comments that are on the screen that you could take a look at and feel free to comment on yourself if you want to if you see them there uh from um let me see make sure i get somebody's name right here uh let's see that is from fadwa uh fadwa says that uh again i always say please forgive me these Instagram names are way above my pay grade. So feel free, if you want to make a comment, feel free to just go ahead and put your put put uh, uh, put a different name in if you want or whatever. If I get it wrong or correct me, it's, it's okay. So um, she talks about religious upbringing causes some people to, to hold on to their way of doing things uh, while not recognizing that it's, it's wicked or that they're doing wrong. Um, uh, that's in a nutshell. I, I kind of mentioned that. Feel free to uh, any more comments, feel free to, to put them in the show as well, everybody. Uh, thank you for, for, for participating. I'm looking at one right now that is from Leave No Contact, Go Ghost. It says, they are snakes all right. So this is a common perception then in your field and people that have to deal with narcissists. Explain more to me the slitheriness of who they are. And those of you that are watching that are here, if you want to make some comments as well or put them in the question section here uh, on uh, on this platform, 
feel free to ask the question too. Let's talk about the slitheriness because I like that word you said that. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> um, no, I really mean that because I hear some stories, but let's take a moment and uh, let's just talk about it for those who are just now learning what narcissistic abuse is all about. Uh, I'll give an example just to kind of tell you what my slithery experience was with my last <laughs> Look who we done started now. See, you have to come up with a line of t-shirts or something like that. <laughs> Go ahead. This is not uncommon for people I've spoken to and been in support groups with, but just, okay, so my person who dated me and stayed living in my house rent-free for three and a half years was... Oh was dating, like virtually dating a woman I know and grew up wow. for the entire length of that relationship. Wait, time out. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, time out. A woman you knew? I Is that what you just school. said? We had been great friends in high school, didn't talk to each other much as adults, but like he went straight for someone right in the, the pack. Of in the circle of your, your circle of your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's just like, and she finally, after we broke up, she contacted me because she was aware of what had gone down. And unfortunately for him, we're total best friends now. And so we talk about him. Wow. And compare notes and everything. And just like, you know, I think one of the things we laugh about is just that we wish we could get in touch with the people he's dating now and lying to now and see if we could try to help those women out and warn them and like, just don't <laughs> waste your time. Uh, and think I think that... That might be a waste of your time <laughs> because, you know, I'm kind of going with Fatwa. Fatwa on the screen. If you look at the screen, Fatwa says they're sneaky and conniving. So right. now that I now that I hear you say that, I'm thinking yeah. for a moment he wanted he already knew he was going to leave or get kicked to the curb. He wanted you guys to keep talking about him when he's gone. Oh, yeah. It's still by so dating her. That's kind of conniving. Oh, that's okay. conniving. Seriously. <laughs> That that type of that type of low minded behavior, that type of uh, self generating negative behavior, and to perpetrate that on someone else instead of just saying, "Hey, look, I need to remove myself from your life because I'm not good enough for you." Now that would have been a very noble thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you know what? I can't trust myself, so let me just go ahead and get out of your way because you deserve better. Right. Because uh, they're sneaky and conniving. Yeah, that, that's where the sneaky comes in. Because to be... No, go ahead. Oh, please, please. There is no nobility, but the fact that... <laughs> there is no nobility. That, I'm <laughs> sorry. That should be a coffee cup right there. It should be <laughs> narcissistic. Yeah, no. Coffee. Yeah, narcissistic. Go ahead. But there the is other, no nobility. I like that. One of the other hallmark symptoms, I think, that keeps them getting caught in these webs of lies is that they think that they're smarter than everyone. They think that they are so much smarter than everyone. And of course, I'm not going to get caught. I am brilliant, you know? And so... That's yeah. what I hear. Okay, seriously, yeah. but that's kind of dumb. No, what you're telling me he did. I don't, I don't get that part because I hear people and I've had people on the shows, my different platforms and shows, and they tell me that. And then when I when I talk with them or in a show prep, I hear part of the story or I listen to it. And I think actually it's like, they're trying to get caught. Oh. <laughs> it's like, well, you got, every, you got to get, everybody's going to get caught. Anyhow, if you're doing wrong, you're going to get, it's going to come out, but and it's just why, funny. Yeah. And that's why they keep the harem of other people, other people, you know, on the burner so that they can go straight to them and jump into a new relationship and cheat on them. You know, what does that say about the people that are on the burner though? Don't they yeah, know they're no, on the I, burner? No, that's the thing. They don't know. It, my friend didn't know. She thought that she was in a real relationship with him for three and a half years while he was living with me, you know? So, no, they have no clue. They're master liars and manipulators. They just are snakes. I mean, it's just, it's not... What's the, up with the lying, though? What's up with the whole lying thing? It's truly pathological. I mean, it's like... <laughs> the, no, the story... No, I'm, I know you have your experience, but I'm, I'm thinking of the stories that I've been told. It's like, they lie like for no reason. Oh, and it's so my favorite. Stupid. Lie, my favorite lie that my guy was saying to the woman that thought she was in a relationship with him. He would tell her every day that he was at his law office, which he hadn't been employed in years and years, um, and that oh. he was working out every day and cooking healthy meals for himself. Meanwhile, he's like sitting on my couch next to me while he's telling her this stuff. <laughs> it's just un. Are you kidding? Oh, okay. No. It's so oh man. Okay, so okay, so now I have to ask because I have to ask this question. 
what was it about this man that caused your toes to curl that you had to be with this man? Okay. So what did you see at the beginning that obviously was not red or it was and you didn't notice it? The reason it was so difficult for me to figure it out sooner is that I had been friends with him since third grade and not just friends, good friends. And I was one of those girls who always hung out with the guys and he was always my favorite. And we had dated after college and, you know, whatever broke up, moved on. But we both became single at the same time and moved back to Portland from New York, where we happened to both be living. And as soon as we found out that the other one was single, we were like, okay, let's give it a shot. You know, I had known him, his family, every single one of his friends since third grade. <laughs> so I always believed that he was this great guy. But I see like when you're friends with a narcissist, they can pull off being great and charming and wonderful and funny for two hours. But if they live with you, the two hours goes by really fast. And you know, it's a terrible uh, end. Yeah, some some people who are sneaky and conniving, they just they should just be by themselves. They should just really leave other people alone. Oh yeah, <laughs> they should, for sure. They should really just enjoy the gift of being single and yeah. leave other people alone. But uh, they obviously need supply. Yes, have to. And what? Go ahead. I was just saying. You're, have to be the center of attention and king of all things, and you know, just the muse of the world and the most wonderful of them all. How, how how was your narcissistic experience with someone, with this individual or others? How how was it for you? What what would they do to be the center of attention? Just make these grandiose speeches about themselves and, you know, just talk about how they're the greatest at everything. And, oh, I went to law school and it's so much harder than any of the education that you've ever had. And I'm just, you know, I've learned to think a whole new way and I'm smarter than everyone. Just, you know, whatever it is that piques their fancy. He was super uh, fancy. He was super into politics. And if you weren't speaking to him at the level like you had read everything that had happened on that particular day for four hours, you know, you weren't going to be his equal. <laughs> so, wow. That's, uh, That's interesting. Lot. Well, now, so then uh, let's do this. Here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. You had uh, the, we had a very um, productive conversation about slithery things and slithery people. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go to this one you have here. It says ever been ghosted. Never, ever let that person back into your life. Then you put in your comment section, see the red flags. Very appropriate because we're in our red today. We just decided to do this by everybody. It's not like a national holiday uh, or anything like that. It's just we're just seeing red. See the red flags. Believe them. That's what you put in your comments. But the, the posting February 23rd was ever been ghosted. Never, ever let that person back into your life. Why? Never let them. Because they don't respect you. They have no respect for you, for your time, for your energy, for your emotions. I mean, if they've established a relationship with you, even if it's a, a smaller sort of beginning stages relationship, for them to not return your texts or your calls or anything not get in contact with you through other people regardless of what the issue is they don't care they do not care about your feelings and it is not worth your time and en energy and it won't change it's not something that they're going to stop doing it's it's you know it's like it's almost like when the narcissist just goes uh, and stonewalls you they don't speak to you they give you the silent treatment they don't care how crazy it makes you only you care you're su you're sweating it and they're not they're just not Wow. So for that person to ghost, disappear, uh, vacate your life as if, as if you don't exist, what would, what would a person be thinking then to let them back in? Okay. So that's the trauma bond. You can like say you've been dating someone for several months and mm -hmm. you so much fun and they were so charming you didn't see any yeah. red but then they ghost you all you can think is like well let's get him to call me back so that we can get back to that good period of time you know? oh you kind of you're sucked in by the goodness of the beginning and you think it's going to return and then they what ghost you or do something else that is awful and you know you're stuck with that but you do still you still want that greatness at the beginning of the relationship and you keep coming back to that it's like a drug 
um, uh, let's uh, turn to the screen again because you're getting some more great comments there. Um, let's see here. This one's from uh, Fadwa as well. Um, it says, these demons know exactly what and how and why more than anything they're doing. What they're doing, and yes, they do think they're the gods of knowledge. Yes. Matter of fact, she even puts in here, uh, and what makes them even more sociopathic is that, that they know what they're doing and that and they, they literally. And yeah. they enjoy it. And I have to say that they probably are enjoying it. They like to see you squirm because that means that they have so much control over you that they can manipulate you and, you know, make you feel horrible. But only they can turn around and give you a little breadcrumb and make you feel good sometimes, too, to keep you, you know, feeding that supply. It's just... It is so manipulative and controlling people are, I mean, narcissists are often very controlling people. And so, you know, whatever is going to keep them in control is what they expect you to do. And yeah, it's just, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to break. And it's just, it gets to be pretty hopeless in, in most situations. Yeah, yeah. Going, it, going back to the comments on the screen, uh, I'm going to segue to that. Uh, it mentions here, uh, again, Fadwa saying, they refuse uh, to their uh, to let their significant other be free or happy. They're true kings of misery and total dysfunction. More and more people have reached out to me because of these two platforms that I have here, um, Narc Abuse TV as well as this one, Open Session Podcast. And people are telling more and more stories, at least I'm getting them, of situations just like this. I like what she said, gods of knowledge. I like what you said. They're slithery. Uh, uh, Fadwa mentioned uh, the fact that they pretty much don't allow their their partner, their husband, their wife, or whatever the case may be, their children, to be free and happy. Yeah. How you, does a person – go ahead. You are going to say. I was just going to say that another really scary part about the controlling stuff is that uh -huh. – that is also often associated with not only narcissistic abuse, but physical abuse. When they get to be real, real controlling of you, that is a huge red flag that things might be headed in that direction. And so, mm. again, you need to recognize the red flags immediately and, you know, plot your way out. If you don't have enough money to move out to a new place or you don't have the resources necessary to keep your kids safe, um, start just start planning small. Like you put some money aside every month. Get some good friends in order who would say that they might take you in if there was an emergency. Just plot. Plot everything. And, and you know, when you need to flee, then you've got something to get you there. Right. And um, a person then needs to seriously consider planning, being prepared, because they know they can't really, they should be able to recognize they can't count on this person, is what you're saying. Oh, not only that, that person might become more and more abusive, not just mentally, but also physically. So you have to recognize that it's time to start planning, bide your time, be a gray rock, fly under the radar, but get your business in order in case you need to get out. Right. This uh, particular platform, uh, Open Session underscore podcast, uh, was started for the main purpose for victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse. That's uh, why it got started. Uh, to be able to uh, share their story, tell their story, uh, to talk about uh, trauma recovery, uh, to even talk about uh, sober journey recovery. Uh, many have become victims uh, of uh, individuals like this that we're talking about, and it has taken them down a dark path where they want to talk about addiction help and other things that they found themselves going down a path that they would have never thought about doing because they felt uh, they just felt unloved. Yeah. that they were never enough, that no matter what they did, they couldn't make this person happy, whether it was a parent, uh, whether it was a sibling, uh, whether it was a boss, whether it was a workmate, uh, whether it was uh, their significant other, a husband or a wife, or whatever it may be, uh, whatever it may be, a friend. Uh, so what you're talking about right now is something that people can do to make their life better but they need to plan, be prepared that this person is going to desert them or domestic violence, domestic abuse is going to ramp up. They right. need to be prepared. 
Yeah, and it doesn't have to, I mean, it can just be obviously the emotional abuse, which is really as damaging as the physical abuse. But right. the trick is to start as soon as you can, making yeah. little ways for yourself to escape, get out. So it doesn't seem like the impossible or something that you have to run out on overnight. Right. Get that friend in line, get, you know, a babysitter in line, whatever you need to do, get a new job if, you know, if that's going to help. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure that there's a long term goal that you're working toward if you feel that you're going to need to get out for your own safety. And some type of documentation is one uh, lady mentioned to me she had a locker at, at, a, at a gym or uh, uh, she had another place somewhere else where she could journal uh, that she knew she had to go to every day or or thereabouts where she was able to keep a record. So if something happened to her, these are, these are serious aspects of dealing with individuals who are highly unstable. Yeah. Uh, this is totally different than uh, someone who's seeking to get help. We have people like uh, Fadwa uh, just mentioned here. Uh, again, please forgive me if I say the name wrong. Um, she mentions that it's like total dictatorship. Yes. Mentally, it's like total dictatorship. Emotionally. Yeah, and you learn to go along with it just because that's the safest thing to do. Like, you know, you might be living in a state that is far away from your family and you might have kids and you know you can't leave the state with your kids unless your abusive partner gives the okay. So you have to have to start making plans and strategies. You know, the support groups are great. You can, you know, say, hey, how did you go about doing this? I've got two kids, I don't have any money. You know, just like there are ways to build your network so that you can absolutely get out. Yeah, love that posting that we just uh, talked about there and started uh, this converse, this part of the conversation on um, ever been ghosted. That's a very good point. A lot of people uh, have told me that they have indeed gone through that part of their life of... Uh, <laughs> of being ghosted. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to ask you about this. It's a very important post. <laughs> <Rut row. laughs> I see two feetsies and 10 toes and it says, get out and have some fun today. Mm. That's a posting that you have. You made that post March 13th. Um, and uh, in that, uh, in on that post, in the comment section, you put move your body. It's good for your brain. Okay, you're the mental health consultant. You're the mental health advocate. Why is it important for us to get our bodies moving, especially when we're dealing with a narcissist? Well, so there are many reasons, but I would say that if you ever suffer from any kind of mental distress, um, not necessarily mental distress, but mental illness, First thing any psychiatrist ever told me when I was 17, 18 years old was that doing exercise, any kind of exercise for 30 minutes every day is the equivalent of taking your antidepressant every day. So you could have both of those things. Time out. Nope. Time out. That was a good one. No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> some people, some people need to repeat on that. Hit the repeat okay. button. So okay. 30 minutes. What did he say? Go ahead. You're so oh, my psychiatrist told me and many have told me since this because I've moved around a lot. I've had lots of different psychiatrists. They always say that taking your antidepressant every day is the equivalent of also like if you did 30 minutes of exercise every single day, it's like yeah. you're doubling the effect of your antidepressant. Wow. It's no brainer. And, you know, of course, oh, dude, seriously. And it's one of the last <laughs> things you want to do when you're feeling bad. And, oh, my God, I'm depressed. But it literally. Oh, man. It helps so much. And, you know, to this day, if I see my daughter in a funk, I'm like, okay, we're going for a power walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, no, hey, no. Hey, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> hey, you gotta give, a, gotta give a shout out for that. No, that's, that's a very good point. I love that. And um, uh, I'm going to pull some more off of uh, your page here in just a second. But thank you, Fadwa, for telling me that I got your name perfect. I got one out of like 5 million people, right? <laughs> Thank you. You're a sweetheart for saying that. I appreciate it. And I truly appreciate everybody that's participating in any of the shows, but especially today as well. Uh, I'm going to turn to your page now and pull this up. Here we go. Were you raised not to make waves? Let's change that. Mm -hmm. Speak your mind is what you have in the comments. Why did you feel a need to make a post like that? 
Well, because it shapes your whole life. The way you're raised to deal with any kind of situation, it, it can carry on throughout your entire life. So I have a father who is also bipolar. Thank you, Dad. So glad I could get that from you. And just like he also yeah. has a violent, violent temper. And so yeah. my mom would always tell us, you know, just, yeah, fly under the radar. Don't make waves when he's behaving that way and blah, blah, blah. And so she taught us how to appease basically the big, uh, excuse me, she taught us to appease the biggest jerk in the room, essentially. And wow. I never let go of that. And all of my romantic relationships were that wow. way. It's just, you carry it with you. And hopefully, obviously, your parents are teaching you wonderful lessons that you're carrying along with you, too. But something like this just was an absolute grooming tool for me to land with people like narcissists who were going to be throwing tantrums whenever they wanted to. And, oh, I didn't, I don't like that, but I was raised with that. I'm familiar with that. Let's stay with it, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just you don't recognize the patterns until you, what, go to therapy at age 35 because you're... So, so so, so when you're when you're with someone like that, I mean, you're speaking of your experiences now, and I truly appreciate your 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 bravery uh, and and your love for other people to do so. I truly appreciate it. Of course. But when you're in that, when you're in that experience, then you just don't exist. Did you did you feel like you didn't exist because you got to cater to the big bully in the room? I felt like if I had any needs or say I might cry because there was something upsetting going on around me or, you know, I might say, hey, I don't like that behavior. I don't want to be around it. Not only would I speak up and say, hey, I don't want to go to dad's house anymore. That was always shot down. I was always going to have to go over there and, and deal with it and function with it. And the best advice my mom ever had was just keep your mouth shut. Okay, and I just, I took that with me. I remember marveling when I was a kid at how good I was at doing that. I just would be quiet for hours, you know? Wow. Um, so it's just, it's one of those lessons that you can learn early. And then often people who get stuck in these narcissistic relationships have learned early to sacrifice what they want for the bigger jerk in the room. Wow. So Can't nobody shut you up now, huh, girl? <laughs> certainly hope not girlfriend you're like you can't tell me to shut up i was just, oh. that, i'm so happy you, you're speaking your mind now so okay yeah. so uh i will not keep you all day but i still have more to ask you about sure. for example ever seen a narcissist well they see you and they're plotting how to bleed you dry mentally emotionally financially and every other way they can think of and then you have three words of advice. Keep your distance. <laughs> and it's got a big eyeball looking at me when you're on the page. And then you got, you got <laughs> in the comment section, you have two words, exclamation mark. You have narc alert. So you're giving some advice. You speak with experience. Go ahead. Tell us some more <laughs> tips that we need to keep in mind. Because you're saying the narc sees us, right? Sees us coming. They do. I mean, if they're if they're showing interest in you, it's because they're sizing you up for what you can do to them. What can you bring to the table? Are they about to be evicted? Well, wow, she's got a nice house. Maybe I could go hang out oh, uh, for a while. You that's know? crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. I'm sorry. Or that's just funny to me. That's right. kind of pathetic. It's pathetic, actually. But, but You know, or do I need a job and this person is a headhunter? Well, let's see if we can, you know, start hanging out and I'll get some free advice or just anything, anything that they see in you that they can possibly possibly bring back to themselves as a benefit, then that's, that's what they're doing. Um, they're always highly manipulative. And it, just that is a common thing. And um, yeah, but again, when it's your turn to need something from them, they're done. Yeah. They're gone. There is just nothing. And that's, a you know, it's a telltale sign for them that, you know, they're never going to reciprocate in any way, even if you bend over backwards to do absolutely anything and everything for them. Well, they're pretty much in take mode anyhow, right? Always, 100% of the time. So so they're ready to take. So if we turn around and have a need that needs uh, attending to, they're not going to be able to do anything because they're not ready to, to give unless it's conditional, I guess. Uh, yeah, conditional giving. They don't have it in them to give. And so that's just, it's never going to happen. And then my other kind of favorite little fact is that they, they this should be, you know, 
a shout out to all the women that have, and men, of course, that have been abused by narcissists. They tend to date up. They look at you and think, oh, she's <laughs> better and smarter and she's wow. going for her than I do because you look good on their arm. But then they decide that, oh, I don't like that she's better than me. Let me take her down a peg or two and say wow. horrible things to make her feel insecure and all that. So. So what's so what's up with that? No, come on, seriously. No, no. Let me. I'm sorry. Let's just think about that for a second. Of course, it makes no sense if they're gonna date up, but yet tell you you're not worthy or good enough or you're insufficient. You're not pretty enough. You're not intelligent enough. You're not smart enough. You know, you're not thin enough. <laughs> you know, you, you're you, this or that. I mean, I keep going. <laughs> if you're not all these things. And this stuff sinks into a person's brain and and just kind of like beats their emotions <laughs> like a whisk beating eggs, then it's obvious that person is going to start to think that, oh, my goodness, I'm just not good enough and the narc is better than me. Oh, yes. and that's But it's all a lie. It's a big, fat, stinking slithery, because I'm going back to what you said earlier. You said slithery. <laughs> it was the last segment or whatever. So this is a big slithery lie, right? Yeah. How does a person overcome that or start to make some type of recovery, narcissistic recovery, because they have been convinced by past history, dealing with the narc, that they're not good enough? Yeah, I mean, I think that you start by educating yourself. You learn about all of the red flags, and that's great. Like, knowledge is absolute, absolutely okay. power in this case. What really helped me was getting in touch with other women who had been through the exact same thing. And then you can laugh about the ridiculousness of it all, okay. but it relate right. to each other. Support groups are amazing. Um, like, you know, again, the silver lining of my last relationship was the fact that the woman that my ex was cheating on has now become my best friend. And that is not lost on me. It's so wonderful. And she's so great. And so um, you know, these lovely things can come of it, but you have to reach out a little bit and, you know, definitely talk to people who have also been through it. Cause nothing, you know, a lot of people don't get it. Why did you stay with him? You know, why would you ever have done that? There's a lot of shame involved. And so you really kind of have to talk to people who've been through it. Because, uh, you've come out on the other side of it, looking back at it, others are just embarking on it and trying to make sense of it which is the whole point of open session podcast is for those and different parts of their journey, different parts of their experience dealing with these self-absorbed haughty people will start to get some semblance of where they're going. But you shed, you've turned on a big spotlight and shed a lot of light on what we've talked about in just these two segments. Now, if it was up to me, we do three. I, I have no problem doing three, even though, you know, I'm a senior citizen, but, um, but what I want to do with you is um, an open session podcast is, again, for victims and survivors of some type of abuse, sober journey. It covers everything. Fitness, it covers a number of different things. Or, or advice. It's like an advice channel. Where NARC Abuse underscore TV, my other public service platform, is where we kind of dig a little bit deeper into narcissism and other things. Um, it's kind of like the flagship of, of the two pages. So you're just going to have to come off this channel next time. We're going to have to plan it for you to be able to come uh, and be a part of Narc Abuse TV. Uh, I am so happy you were on this page today. I do not want to dig too much deeper because I, want, I know what I want to do on Narc Abuse TV now. <laughs> so so, so this, is, this is like I want to keep going, but I want to do it on the other page. And, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're just doing this particular show today. I wanted to spend time with just you today uh, and just do one show instead of normal two or three shows I do a day. Uh, so do me a huge favor, please. Let me do three things here with you real quick, uh, and then um, we'll get a chance hopefully in the next uh, 14, 20 some odd days to be able to plan something, and we'll do something again in about a month or so, but on my other platform. Uh, but right now, I have three things I want to run by you, and I hope you're ready. Here we go. Okay. First, you have a picture of a young lady uh, who is uh, sad to say is no uh, longer alive. Her name is Marilyn Monroe. Mm. You put on this page, and you already kind of know where I'm going with this, but I just have to bring this up. Uh, this posting that you have, it talks about women's mental health history. It's the March 15th post. You put on that particular post, Marilyn Monroe, 
actress, model, singer, uh, sex symbol icon, suffered from severe depression and what modern scholars believe to be borderline personality disorder, BPD. This uh, posting uh, here has uh, your comments, and it says this. It says, having mental illness doesn't mean you can't accomplish a ton in your lifetime. Why are those words, because I'm always looking for encouragement on my platform. I mean, we could be negative all day. I don't need I don't need to help other people do that. But why is this important for people to know? Because you're not just a wash up just because you've had a mental illness. So many brilliant people have been associated with bipolar disorder alone. Look at Kanye. I mean, he's gotten just crucified in the press. Everyone knows he's bipolar. He's also a genius. He gets such a hard time, even though we all know that bipolar disorder causes weird behavior, you know, so you can be in the public eye or not. You're still going to get a lot of attention for whatever your behavior is that is associated with your mental illness, which is awful and horrible. And especially if you're in the public eye, but you just can't live with the shame of it. You can't let that carry you because we all have these talents that are incredible that we carry around with us that, you know, people are so appreciative of. And, you know, sometimes you have, you're, you have to be a little bit mad to be a genius. And so I see that. I see that in different artists. And, you know, the more bipolar disorder is becoming such a huge thing that is diagnosed so often. You know, it's a lot of people, Demi Lovato, all kinds of people that are terribly talented have this illness. So it doesn't have to stop you in your tracks. It's just another bit of you. What if uh, an individual starts to see their life uh, in a totally opposite way than the way you have beautifully uh, mentioned, which is very important that a person recognizes uh, that they can still have a full life. What if they see it the other way, that they won't go get help because of the stigma or because of their pride or the illness in itself, and now they say, I'm just going to live my life, as it were, keeping it in a closet. Why is that maybe not the most productive direction to go in because unfortunately those are the people that might end up taking their own lives i mean the statistics are so high for people with mental illness to like attempt suicide or carry it through it's just awful it's insidious um sometimes it's it's the sort of thing that you absolutely have to take care of if you want to have a lengthy life you can be on meds that help you so much i am um, you know, there's so much to live for, but yeah, the, the stigma is strong and it's really unfortunate. And one thing that horrifies me so much when I look at these statistics is that African Americans are 30% less to get mental health help than any other population. And that makes me mm. just so sad and sick, you know, like, I don't know. I think that we all need to be a little easier on ourselves and not look at, you know, getting care as, as a falling down, it's, it's really picking yourself up. It has become a, a situation when it comes to mental health that is, uh, uh, is tragic in so many different uh, aspects and areas and uh, just within the human culture itself, as it were, um, even beyond a, a given skin color, because I've had uh, people from different parts of the world come on, and uh, mental health is talked more about in America than anywhere else. But to hear people talk about, uh, I've had guests from Russia, and to hear them say how uh, you cannot bring it up at all. It don't care what your skin color is. <laughs> and, and the older, older individuals are literally just dying, you know, without uh, major help. It's amazing that throughout human society that it has got to this point that uh, this is something bigger than man can even tackle in many different ways. But yeah. that's why I appreciate you. Thanks. In our wait, in our in our red day, we don't call it red day. I might even post. I might even post that. Just our red day. No, it's my first time ever doing it like this. So I, you know, I, we color coordinated on on purpose. Uh, but um, on our red day, we are. I appreciate you that you were able to come on and talk about these things. Uh, I do need to. I got two more. One is don't get tricked into old patterns with a narcissist. Educate yourself. Recognize abusive behavior, and disengage. I got to read it again. Now, it's a big exit sign is what you have. And you have these words again. Don't get tricked into old patterns with a narcissist. One, 
educate yourself. Two, recognize abusive behavior. Three, disengage is what you say. Why are these three tips very important to fight off old patterns when that Hoover gets plugged in and they want to, they want to come back in? There are so many emotions, like they tend to, um, narcissists tend to go after partners who are incredibly feeling and empathic and com compassionate. And so they know they can pull on your heartstrings. And if you've broken up and they have nothing but wonderful things to say to you again, and how they want everything to, you know, work out this time. And they want everything, you know, to have this bright future. And oh, maybe we'll get married one day. They just want to, it's again about control. They just want to know that they can wrap you up again, that they can get uh -huh back on the hook and it's just like a stupid game for them um and they're probably doing it to four other women at the, same, at the same at the same time at the same time like at they the might same be time. copying and pasting the text to every single person <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's, it's like a school there's like a school for narcissists and they're is. sitting around and, and today's class is about copy and paste why oh. is that important let me show you, you just copy you said that to her come up with one message and you send that out to 10 people and see who <laughs> Who responds in a way that you can uh, steal their supply? Oh, yeah. There's some evil playbook out there just <laughs> around the narcissist God. community. Okay. I'm there. sorry. You came up with Slither. You said <laughs> copy and paste. You said another one. I can't think what it is right now. Uh, now you're, I have to watch the show back to find it. That was pretty good. Slither, <laughs> copy. You know what? That might be a title of a book you can come up with. Maybe an e-book. Oh Slither, copy and paste. And we need one of the, you know, oh, no, disengage. You should, that should be, the book should be entitled Disengage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good, How like to disengage it. from slithering and uh, oh. narcissist and okay, anyhow, just making up stuff as I go in my head. Uh, <laughs> so this is very important. The posting you gave, you guys want more? You got to go to Darcy's page. Uh, very important that you do, but don't forget one: <laughs> educate yourself. Okay, two: recognize abusive behavior. Don't stand for it, people's people's people. Don't stand for it, people. Okay, <laughs> put your foot put your footsies down. And three, disengage, disembark, totally, totally disengage. Don't become a part of that. Last, last one, last one. I'm going to run by you here. I have to do this. No one turns into the Hulk faster. Now, you know where I'm going, right? Okay. So no one turns into the Hulk faster than a narcissist confronted with the truth. Okay. Okay. Like, you what? got the you got the pulpit. Go ahead. It's, it's open. You're gonna be <laughs> preaching to the choir now. Go ahead. What I mean, do you what? mean by that? <laughs> well, I don't know how many people out there grew up with this show, but I loved it. Just how quickly that Hulk could, you know, fly <laughs> in his evil self. And you know, I had a little brother. Hey, hey, hey we don't we don't want to we don't want to know about your childhood fantasies. We don't we don't want to know about you. Your <laughs> fantasies about guys with big muscles. Go ahead. Just get to get to the point, Darcy. Okay. Get to the chop chop. <laughs> Tap, tap, sister, get to the point. So, <laughs> one of the all games, right, go ahead. One of the games that I play with myself now that I'm comfortable with setting boundaries is to just full on set boundaries every time someone crosses my path in the wrong way. And it is okay. so fascinating and entertaining how quickly they will fly into a rage over the fact that, oh my God, she's spoken the truth and it applies to me. You know, it's like yeah. they lose their minds. And thankfully, I'm not scared of it anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> it's just kind of amuses me and I always wish that I was filming it you know so um yeah I mean it's true you you can't confront you're never going to get what you want out of confronting a narcissist you just never will they will lie to your face and they will deny it even though they did if they just did it five seconds ago in front of your face like they'll they'll never give you what you want they're never going to say oh my gosh you're right I'm so sorry I know I hurt your feelings um what can I do to make it up to you that's just never going to happen they would rather fight to the death it's not gonna happen no they would rather fight to the death than make yeah. a mess with you about something they've done wrong and that's well, just what it is. yeah well um this has been more than uh, enough fun for me uh <laughs> except i would love to do another segment but we're gonna do one but it's gonna be on narc abuse underscore tv but uh, i've got a whole series of things that i i want to uh, put to you and then uh, we can kind of plan a show that way these shows are all non-scripted uh, overall, uh, at least 90% of it is non-scripted, uh, up to 98 in many cases. This was not scripted today. This is just Darcy and I having what all these platforms are, a positive conversation about different subjects. 
Um, you talked a little bit about your life and dealing with a narcissist. Um, I'm quite sure you won't go back that, down that path again um, because you will be able to uh, remember educating oneself, recognizing abusive behavior, and disengaging can be three fundamental steps that a person can make, even if they just meet someone that's uh, showing these traits at the beginning. Uh, but uh, I hope more people will reach out to you and your page and connect with you and get tips of advice uh, because you're a wonderful person who really does care about people. And uh, I appreciate you being a, a person strong of heart to be on the show today. Uh, you get, you've been getting hearts across the screen on both segments, so I'm just telling you again, you're getting hearts on the screen again. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It wasn't that bad, huh, girl? You, awesome. You were nervous all at the beginning. I can't say. <laughs> hey, you, the worst the, the worst part of doing a show with me is you have no idea where I'm going. The best part of, about doing a show with me is that it's always about you. <laughs> so, 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 so no matter how much you don't know what I'm going to ask, you will always know it has something to do with your page and, and, and your life. So uh, thank you so much for being an awesome person. And you made me wear red today. And I do have yeah, red. I, just, I have, yeah, Well, yeah, that's true. Hey, hey, you wear it so well. I went like, hey, I'm, I joined the party, too. We just go ahead and just we just have a, a red a red flag day. So we had a red. Well, this is our red flag show, everybody. Uh, two segments. That's what I'm calling it now. I'm going to I'm going to change the posting on it. This was a red flag show that we had. We had segment one and now segment two. Thank you so much. Thank the next you. time we'll get a chance to be on the other platform. And I do want to touch some more about uh, bipolar and maybe P, uh, PTSD when we get on the other the other channel. But uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Anything you'd like to say to everybody before you go? Thank you for joining. I'm so excited to get to see you again on Narcopias TV. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, um, this has been great. I appreciate it. I hope yeah. you're all well. Please contact me if you have any questions. Yes, thank you. And, uh, you're, and any show notes uh, as you go back and review the show, any notes that uh, you can put in the comments, for people, uh, a lot of my viewers over the past two weeks have been asking me to mention that to my guests uh, because they they would like to have kind of like a like a little tip sheet that okay. lets them know some points that you pulled out of the show for them to keep in mind. There, so you're going to be the first one to do that. But uh, they've been asking more and more. Uh, I've just decided to, to make you the guinea pig of yeah. doing that. So okay. please feel free to put down any tips that you want to throw in there, but always direct attention as I do back to your page people uh don't ask me for advice please don't yeah i'll, I'll steer you wrong talk uh, talk to darcy she knows what she's talking about thank you darcy thank you everybody leave no contact go ghost uh fadwa everybody that was here we appreciate you uh i love everybody thank you darcy thank stay you so safe much. we'll talk bye. to you soon bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.